a Pilsner for your downtime. Hi, it's Brian Lake back with another beer review, a Brain Muffin, and that's what I'm known on an untapped. So uh, some people have been asking, Brain Muffin on untapped, send a friend request and I'll accept. Uh, don't be surprised how many it's check-ins you see sometimes nights. And of course, as always, there go the dogs. Somebody's going to be chewing on something. So this is a, a new, I believe, it's a new Pilsner from Sam Adams. This is at least the third Pilsner that I've had from them. Back in the 90s, they had a, a Pilsner called the Golden Pilsner. I still have some of those bottles that I use for some of my homebrew. Um, and if, the slogan was something like, you've been drinking Pilsners, have, but have you ever tasted one or something like that. I don't know what happened to that one. Uh, I don't know if they even still make it. Maybe I need to dig a little deeper on that. But I actually liked that Pilsner. It was pretty good. It was great with, with you know, your fatty meats and sausage and stuff like that, as you would expect a Pilsner to be to you know, either Czech or Southern German uh, cuisine. And then they came out with Noble Pils, which I had multiple times. I had multiple iterations. I've had it on tap. I had it in bottles. And it was always horrible. I mean, always just bad. I mean, so friends of mine, we started calling it Noble Piss. Uh, supposedly, uh, Jim had it made for his daughter's wedding, and then he had sold it. I, I don't know. I don't know if it just didn't travel well. It was horrible. So, and then eventually it was gone, I believe. So now we have this one. We have a downtime Pilsner, crisp and lightly hopped, crisp and lightly hopped with new and heritage Bavarian hops. Uh, what I believe that is is you've got some old school Bavarian hops in, in Germany, and the new ones perhaps made here. Uh, several years ago, there was really bad ravaging of hop crops uh, all over the world, and uh, Bavaria got hit pretty hard. I believe it was hail that hit there. Uh, we brewed this new with new hops grown in the old hop gardens of Bavaria. Okay, so that's where they replaced uh, the hops there and noble hops. And, and noble hops are one of those uh, things that are characteristic of Pilsners. Um, now, Pilsners technically come from the Czech Republic now, as it's known, and, uh, from the town of Pilsen. And um, Bud, Budvar is actually pretty good. I ought to do a review of Budvar. That's supposedly what uh, the original Budweiser was inspired by or became or something like that. I think it was known as Budweiser in Germany. I, I, it's one of those things, I'm not sure how much of it's real and how much of it's urban legend. But uh, Budvar is pretty good um, for a Pilsner. Remember, Pilsners are going to be light in flavor. They're really not going to have lots of hoppiness. It's not a, you know, a pale ale. And it is a lager, so it should have a clean finish. The cooler fermenting yeast, and apparently this one might be a little on the cool side. It's not very well carbonated. Has that distinct Pilsner uh, smell. And so it may not have a lot of bubbles. Once you drink it, it's very carbonated. And that is, that's like Pilsner. And there's a, there's a little bitter aftertaste. Uh, there's also, uh, uh, and they're extreme, they're, they had a, they had a Pilsner, it was, I forget what it was called. It wasn't Ultimate Pilsner. It wasn't extreme, but it had a hot, a hot bitterness of an IBU of 100. I remember that. So this is the fourth Pilsner, and I actually like that one too. I forget what they called those things. I'm going to have to review those things. I know. It seems like I'm really ill-prepared to talk about stuff. So I'm going to go and check into this one. And, you know, I'm not a huge Pilsner fan. Um, I will say this. As a home brewer, the Pilsner is one of the absolute hardest styles to do, bar none. Uh, the thing about a hoppy ale, even if I did say I did an ale this color and I hopped the crap out of it, I can hide a lot of imperfections in my system and in my gear and everything else with a lot of hops. Pilsners aren't really hoppy. They're just kind of there to be consumed while you're enjoying other things. They're just a way of having something to drink that's a little bit above water. Um, so it's not going to have crap tons of, of flavor. And so, because of that, you don't have lots of malts, you don't have lots of, of yeast, you don't have a lot of flavors, you don't have as much hop characteristics, some, but not much. Any imperfection at any point in your manufacturing, you're creating of a Pilsner, it's going to show up. So, I have to, as much as I don't like those big commercial breweries that make, you know, giga gallons of garbage, that beer to produce that beer that consistently for that in those v mass quantities like they do is extremely difficult and I will tip my hat to, to them for that. 
And that's all I'll tip my hat to them. Everything else is, you know, the marketing scams and all that other nonsense I don't want to get into. So as a, far as a Pilsner, this is much better than the Noble Pils, I will say that. Which was also made from Noble Hops, and now I spilt it. Party foul. I actually did spill it that time. So now it's warmed up a little bit. Now this being a Pilsner, being a lager, really 40 degrees is about as warm, maybe 43, depending on the type of hops. Because then you're just going to get a lot of bitterness because there's no malt backbone there to, to sing against. Um, this one is 5% alcohol, so that's about middle of the road for a Pilsner. Uh, I, think, I don't know if there's anything that's called an Imperial Pilsner, but um, I think that's maybe what Sam Adams made. I had this line of four, and there were three of them that had the same bottle, and they had this other one. And it, I'll find it at some point, maybe. Um, so I'm going to give it a 4.25 because I like it, even though I don't like this style. Because um, it is much better. Uh, this, granted I may have poured it wrong, but what I've also noticed about Pilsners is they don't bottle well. The vast majority, even the crap Pilsners, are much better when they're draft than canned or bottled. Because um, it just, it's a very delicate, very... Uh, I don't want to say middle of the road, it's, but it's a very narrow band of flavor for a Pilsner. And because of that, it doesn't tend to travel well. And this, I mean, it's a brown bottle, but this gives very little. Um, it's slightly better than a clear or green bottle, but not much. Uh, gold bottle, uh, red bottles, right, where they have gold in the glass, that actually helps prevent it. And cans are much better as far as light struck. But a Pilsner, any mishandling of a Pilsner at any point, if it got too warm, if it sat in the sun, especially if it's in a bottle, it's going to show up when you try to consume it and that's why Pilsners are, make. I, mean, I know the big mega brewers make all kinds of, of marks about them. As far as the craft beer, Pilsner, this is probably one of the better ones. And the best Pilsners I've ever had have all come from Germany and some of the breweries there that are really good. Um, not your, your, your mega ones though. So, but this is definitely, like I said, you know, it's a German Czech style, southern Germany, southeast, southeastern Germany, and in, into the Czech Republic. So, it's obviously going to go with a lot of foods from that region: goulash soup, your your sausages. Uh, in the German uh, southern sausages are a little bit different than what you get in the north, and that's pretty much in the states. At least I found in the Midwest, most of the people they came here from Germany came from the north, and it's a very different flavor. Bratwurst in in, in Germany. Where I grew up in the South, are kind of, they're not red, they're kind of a pink, you know, they're like a brown color. They're not white like they are here, and what people call uh, uh, something else. But anyway, I'm sorry, the dogs are distracting me. They were quiet and asleep on the couches until I pulled my camera out. Unbelievable. But I got to get some videos done today. So I got, a, like I said, 4.25 out of uh, 5. I checked it in untapped. And uh, definitely have, this is great with anything you're going to cook on a grill, really. But it is great with your German face, stereotypical German fare. The, the heavier, fattier foods. This is really made to cleanse the palate. That's why it doesn't have a lot of flavor. And then you're going to enjoy those other foods better. So, all right. And German mustard, too. Don't forget the mustard. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for clicking like. Thanks for the comments. I'm trying to get some... Um, other reviewers are going to try to do some collaboration here. We'll see what happens. That would be awesome. Uh, but there might be some technical hurdles we've got to get over, overcome first because that would be great to have a couple, two or three people talk about the same beer and then we'll all share it on our channels. That would, I think, would be, I think it's a great idea, but I've got to get some people that also think it's a great idea. We that have the technology that we can do it. All right. Thanks again. If you've had uh, Downtime Pilsner and, and think I'm full of it or think it's good, think it's crap, whatever. Leave comments below and thank you very much. Bye. Hello and welcome to the craziness. Fitness stuff. You know what? Me, I'll do the fitness thing first. Now let's do this one. We ought to do it over here. That's all right, Toby. Behave.